Welcome to Product One's YouTube uh, series. Today we are looking at uh, the very new PTC's AI-driven generative design. Uh, this is known as generative topology optimization. This comes as uh, at the backdrop of PTC acquiring a company called Fastram in the late or late November uh, 2018. So let's jump into the demo. So what we have here is the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, the one, uh, the same model that I used to generate this concept uh, design uh, using Freestyle. And what we're going to be doing today is something a little bit different. So I have here this component. So we can hold in onto that part. Uh, this is a, a normal component that I've just made uh, out of casting. So the idea be behind this is it will take you a number of iterations to get to this level. So what happens if you do have generative design? So what I have here is just a basic extrude. So this model here consists of, of bodies. We spoke about multi-body design where you can use those to localize operations. The previous video was to look at additive manufacturing. If you have not looked at that video, please uh, pay, pay a visit to that. So what we have now in PDC Creo uh, 7.0 is, is the ability to say, I want to go into this uh, simulation, uh, which is called a generative design. It immediately tells you here that you've got an areas that you need to define and there's no study that is defined here as well. So I'm going to select what is called the starting geometry. So which geometry do I really am willing to manipulate? So that's the one. And which geometry am I willing to, to preserve? So that means that this is not going to be part of the computation. So that's what I, I have. So immediately you can see here on my model tree that there's no longer flags that relates to that. There's an array of things that I can actually do, but for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to jump into specifying the physics components. So I'm going to select a constraint and I'm going to put in a, a load case here and I'm going to define the magnitude in both X and Y. And I can obviously manipulate the, the, the units and that's just about it. So. I can now specify a design criteria as far as this is concerned. So for an example, I can say, what am I hoping to achieve? So I'm looking at interrogating, let's say, strain energy at a targeted volume, for an example. So I'm looking at 67% of the volume and I can choose an array of manufacturing constraints. So I can um, uh, design for extrusion or for or casting or whatever. So you'll see uh, an example of the of these a bit later. But for this purpose, I'm just going to select just symmetry. So what that means is I want when it generates the geometry, the geometry must be symmetrical. And last but not least, I'm just going to add a uh, material. So let's see. Let's just choose this one. So I'm just going to choose that alu cast alloy and I'm just going to say I'm happy with this. So if you can now see, I'm no longer having flags on my model tree. And what I like is that inside my graphics window, it tells me that this study is fully defined. It tells you what is it that you're doing? What is the material? What is the mess at this point? And if you can see here, I even have the element size, so I can modify these. So this is uh, the fi the fidelity uh, scale, whereby you can choose to say, look, I want to have uh, speed, and then the detail will be not as refined, or you want more detail while you're compromising speed. So there's a number of iterations there. That's just about it. So I'm going to now run this in real time. So if you can see there, it, the study is now starting to optimize it. Obviously, it gives you a hint in terms of the mess that is currently generating and so forth. This is artificially, artificial intelligence driven design. So what, where this is coming from, and I'll tell a, a little bit of a backstory as far as this is concerned while the analysis is carrying on, is that uh, acquisition of PDC 
uh, of Fastrum. Uh, this is a company based in, in Colorado, and they are offering cloud-based engineering so software that enables designers to go beyond the limits of personal experience. This basically allows you to leverage things like your artificial intelligence. So, so this coincides a lot uh, nicely with, with the PDC partnership with ANSYS that uh, started or and what was announced at LiveWorks in June of 2018. And if you think about what PDC is doing, is having these partnerships and acquisitions to take all of these technologies and integrate them inside Creo. So what you see there is the fast drum engine inside Creo generating that geometry. Never in a in million of years would have uh, come up with a design like this. And if you look, there's the design is complete. Of course, I can have a look at the results. And this is similar to what you have now in Creo Simulation Live. Or we'll just wait, uh, we'll, we'll do a video of that uh, a bit later uh, in the week. So I can choose to say, I'm looking at my von Mises stress, and I can have probes where I can say, what happens if I select, for an example, here, or what is the stress at that particular level? I can have mean, max values if I want. I can even say, you know what, what happens if I modify, let's say, my maximum and make it that way? I can do a couple of things. Of course, I can animate this if I want. I can view displacement. There's a couple of things that you can actually do. So I can play this. I can even increase the speed at which this is animated. And this is what I have at the moment. So the power of generative design does not actually uh, end here. This is where it starts um, leveraging the power of PDC Creo and freestyle uh, geometry. So immediately when I say I like what I'm seeing here, so let me generate this design, not on this component, but I will create a brand new part, maybe uh, call it a different name. Then I'm going to choose what you call reconstruct to B-Rep. B-Rep simply means boundary representation. So it's a boundary of surfaces that are joined together. And I'm going to say generate. And I'm going to call this, let's give it a, a name, let's call it Bob. Now, immediately when I say, okay, you will see now the result of this is actually even far more refined what, than what we used to have in topology optimization in Creo, in a sense that you get this nice crisp model that is still intelligent. When I say intelligent, so you will see you can still modify geometry. It's not just dumb data, okay? And of course, you can also modify the, the body that is being generated by uh, generative topology optimization. All right. So while this is actually carrying on, um, there's a couple of other things that uh, I, I need to highlight. One, this is making sure that you have speed in delivering complex products or innovative products. And it's easy to use, as you can see, it gives you sort of like an indication of a guide or a ribbon or a step to follow. And you will see that that's pretty much the direction that PDC has adopted throughout the years, in a sense that even if you're not a simulation expert, you are able to utilize a tool as powerful as this. All right, so this is just about to, to complete. And you will see now uh, that this entire model uh, if, if it's finished in rendering just now. This entire model, this geometry that you see here in the middle, oh, it just appeared on the other window. This geometry here is now part of a body. It even stipulates that this is a geometry that was reconstructed. So now think about the power of, I've just utilized artificial intelligence to make my part a lot strong. Of course, I can say substitute this with letters like I did the last pre previous demonstration. So I'm not going to uh, 
do that, but I just wanted to show you that the entire model tree is basically a copy. It's no longer dependent on the original design. And of course, if I were to make any modification here, this will tell me that, oh, the study is now out of date. So that means that I will have to rerun it and so forth because whatever changes that I will make here, yeah, they will affect obviously this geometry. And if you can look there, there is a couple of curves that the system generates as it creates this organic shape. All right. So all that it's left is for me to say, how about I utilize a Boolean operation and take that surface and that one and just join them. So now I'm having one solid component that is generated utilizing generative topology optimization. And that's the beauty of this. So there's an array of, of, of things that you can actually use. So for an example, you can utilize what you call manufacturing processes. So this is exactly the same uh, model, but for this one, I just said, I don't have a 3D printer to make a, a part that complex. This one, I'm just going to utilize a CNC router or, or milling operation. So this is what I would, I would have. So, and ultimately this is how the design will look like. And I've just in the, just to put it into perspective, this is the original design. This is the one that is designed for additive manufacturing. It's coming from generative topology optimization. And this now is the one that comes from uh, generative topology, but with manufacturing processes in this case uh, for just for milling. All right, so now that I'm happy with these designs, so I can do a couple of things. So for an example, I can say, look, how about I take this model now and substitute it or replace it? So I can use things like your interchange assemblies to say, okay, which component do I want? Is it the one, is it this the one that I'm looking for? If, if the answer is yes, then I'll select it. And I, I just apply this and you'll see that the entire <clears throat> model will be substituted with a new one. So the idea behind this is PDC is pushing the envelope in terms of innovation, especially if you think of what we have now in terms of uh, additive manufacturing, IoT, uh, uh, what you call this AR, VR. Uh, they are trying to make sure that when CAD is going through this entire renaissance period, PDC is committed to leading the way. So that is it uh, for me and this particular series. Thank you so much. Until next time, uh, goodbye.